Spoiler alert, dinosaurs aren't coming back because DNA only has a half-life of 500 years. Mammoths, on the other hand, have had their genome sequenced due to the fact that they've only gone extinct about 10,000 years ago. Does that mean it's possible to bring back the mammoths? Hmm. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Gene coming at you live from a shack in the middle of nowhere because my landlord kicked me out. You're watching Gene's Genes. Genes. Gene. Genes. So you may be saying to yourself, wow, how did they sequence an entire mammoth genome? Well, they kind of didn't. Due to the fact that DNA only has a half-life of 500 years, no complete mammoth genome could be found in the wild. However, what the scientists could do is they can take a bunch of the mammoth fragmented DNA pieces and cross-reference them with an African elephant genome to deduce what a mammoth genome would most likely look like. That is exactly what they did. Now the scientists could have quit while they were ahead and had that complete genome sequenced. However, one of the more bold scientists claimed that mammoths could be back within the next couple decades. Now that's why I'm here, making this whole shebang. So how could the mammoths come back? Well, there are three possible methods that could be used to bring back the mammoths. Backbreeding, gene editing, and somatic nuclear transfer. In backbreeding, African elephants would be selectively bred in order to exhibit mammoth qualities. Over successive generations, the African elephant will actually begin to become a mammoth. This idea, however, has numerous pitfalls associated with it. First off, African elephants don't begin breeding until about 20 years of age, so that's going to take a ton of time. In addition, Mammoths and African elephants are actually pretty morphologically different from one another. Mammoths are larger, hairier, and have much bigger tusks than African elephants. Even if we were to have the time and the resources to do all of this, the final product of this would not be able to be classified as a technical mammoth. As Linnaeus once said, My goodness, this isn't a mammoth. This is just an African elephant that looks like a mammoth. Ya gooba. So, uh, backbreeding's out. What about gene editing? How would we do that? The easiest way to accomplish gene editing in the African elephant genome would be to cleave out a piece of DNA using the CRISPR method, adding in a mammoth gene, and then having it sewn back into the DNA via non-homologous end joining. You may already know what non-homologous end joining is, however, you may not know what the CRISPR method is. Fortunately, I have a fun little explanation for you. Roll film! The CRISPR method is based on a natural system used by bacteria to protect themselves from infection by viruses. When the bacterium detects the presence of virus DNA, it produces two types of short RNA one of which contains a sequence that matches that of the invading virus. These two RNAs form a complex with a protein called Cas9. Cas9... Yeah, this is actually a really boring explanation of it, so I think I'm going to do this my way instead. A small village of Bacteriorama, a dynamic trio, maintains the balance of justice. Meet the Cas protein. A young samurai whose blade can cut through any piece of DNA. Cass receives his hit information from a man in the Mafia known as CRISPR RNA. They are unified by a spy named Tracer RNA. They form a complex called the CRISPR Complex. No piece of foreign DNA is safe from these three. In a cruel twist of fate, Cass found himself not in Bacteriorama, but in Mammothville. He also noticed that his two friends looked entirely different. CRISPR RNA told him to get a hit on a new piece of DNA, so he did. As it would turn out, this was not a foreign piece of DNA, 
Rather, it was a gene for hair growth in the African elephant genome. What will happen next? Find out next time on the exciting adventures of the CRISPR! However, just like backbreeding, gene editing's final product cannot be classified as a mammoth. As Linnaeus once said, My goodness, this isn't a mammoth. This is just an African elephant mammoth hybrid, you turkey. Well, I guess that only leaves us with somatic nuclear transfer, huh? In somatic nuclear transfer, an African elephant zygote's nucleus would be removed without disturbing any of the other organelles, of course, and it would be replaced with a synthesized nucleus containing the entire mammoth genome. The new zygote would then be placed in a surrogate mother where it would grow into a mammoth baby. Now this theory sounds very good on paper, however, in practice, this has really low success due to the fact that somatic nuclear transfer is incredibly violent to the cell membrane of that zygote. The only individual to survive past birth using this process was a Spanish Bercardo. <laughs> And it didn't live too much longer after that. Aww. It died a few seconds due to respiratory failure. So it looks like it's going to be incredibly difficult to bring back the mammoth so far. But let's say that we get somatic nuclear transfer down pat. What would happen next? Well, if we've already made one, we're going to have to make more. Unfortunately, we're also going to need genetic variation in the population. Genetic variation ensures that the population of mammoths that we've made is going to be able to adapt and evolve to the environment. This, of course, is going to require us to find more mammoth DNA and get even more sequencing done. Do we have the time and money to do that? I don't think so. But hey, let's say that the scientific community has as much money and time as Donald Trump thinks he has. What would we do next? We have to consider the fact that the mammoth genome has been absent from evolution for about 10,000 years. You miss one day of genetics class and you're just like, uh -huh. The mammoth genome is enrolled in the school of hard knocks, which means 365 days a year. That means that the mammoth genome has missed at least 3,650,000 classes. That kind of puts them at a disadvantage when compared to their African elephant counterparts. Today, Junior? But so what? So they missed out on a little bit of evolution. How much could the world have changed? Well, one of the reasons the mammoths went extinct in the first place is because their entire environment changed. As the Earth began to warm up, their fantastic grasslands began to be replaced by coniferous forests which are very low nutrient, and it's been proposed that birch was actually toxic to the mammoths. So even if we were to make a mammoth population, we would have nowhere to put them. On one last note, I'd like to say, is all of this ethical? Hell yeah, no, to the no, 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 hell yeah, to the no. The science of bringing back the mammoth has two major ethical barriers that it has to cross. One. Scientists are going to have to be willing to kill dozens, if not hundreds, of surrogate mothers in order to successfully recreate the mammoth species. Secondly, scientists are going to have to be willing to divert funding from already established forms of conservation in order to attempt to bring back the mammoth. Yeah, that sounds like some pretty good logic. We can attempt to bring back the mammoth, and while we do that, we can possibly cause some more species to go extinct. But hey, that's just the cost of doing business, am I right? So let's do a quick recap here. Backbreeding, genetic altering, and somatic nuclear transfer are all pretty much flawed in bringing back the mammoth. We can't make a new population without a bunch of extra time and money going into getting new genomes. The mammoth genome might not even be suitable for life as we know it, and if we attempt this, we're going to be killing a bunch of surrogate mothers, and we could possibly cause some more species to go extinct. All things considered, I think that bringing back this species is...
Two mammoths of an undertaking. If you know how I feel, why would you say that?